Welcome to all of you to another installment of St. Peter's Lutheran School Chapel. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, been a long time since Easter, but we are still in the Easter season. And we are still celebrating Christ's resurrection. We celebrate his resurrection really every week. And um, we're still in Easter. We're going to start off as we normally do uh, with the invocation and the call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Let's sing.
So we're going to pray right now. I want to uh, pray a blessing on the school and a blessing on, on each of you who are joining us today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, we thank you for the blessings that you have brought us uh, during this Easter season. The blessing of knowing, Lord, that our sins are taken far, far, far away from us because of your death upon the cross. And the blessing, Lord, that you give us, knowing that because you have been raised from the dead, we too are raised from the dead, can experience new life now, and have an eternity of life with you to look forward to. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessing that you have given us in saying, I will be with you forever. I'm with you always. And knowing that that promise is as true as the nail marks in your hands and the wound in your side. We know it's true, Lord, because you shed your blood for that promise. And so, Lord, uh, uh, we ask a blessing upon our school, upon all of the students, on all the families, parents and grandparents, relatives. We ask a blessing of your grace and your peace upon our staff and on each and every one of our students. And we ask, Lord, that this week we would be able to walk in your presence and that we would catch you in the act time and time again as we go throughout this week. That we would look here and look there and say, oh, that was a God thing, or just thank you, Lord. So, Lord, um, we uh, ask now that you would speak through Pastor Joe, that you would bring us your word so that we might live. We thank you, Lord, for these blessings. In your name we pray. Amen.
scripture reading today is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, beginning with verse 1. We'll read through verse 8. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So, hopefully by now, it is a Wednesday in this week, and hopefully by now you know what this coming Sunday is. Hopefully you know what this coming Sunday is. If you don't, um, think about it a little bit. I'll give you a couple seconds. Okay, good. Hopefully you know that this Sunday is Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, and uh, Mother's Day uh, um, is a time where we appreciate show love, thankfulness uh, to the mothers in our lives, uh, whether it's a mother or a grandmother or an aunt or um, uh, what, some, some woman in your life that has uh, treated you and loved you and cared for you, treated you like a mother and loved you and cared for you and been there for you. And uh, so it's a Mother's Day and, and this is a wonderful time and I'm sure you guys are putting together things uh, maybe at home, maybe even at school uh, to show appreciation on this Mother's Day. And I was thinking about that, and one of the things that often will happen around Mother's Day is all of a sudden you go to the store, if I were to go down to uh, Bel Air uh, right now, or another store, or to the florist, everybody is buying flowers, right? Everyone's buying flowers for, uh, for Mother's Day. And I was thinking about that a little bit ago, and uh, this will be uh, the 16th Mother's Day uh, for my wife. Um, our daughter turned 16 in March. Our oldest daughter turned 16 in March, I should say. So it'll be the 16th Mother's Day uh, for my wife. And, uh, but I'm reminded of conversations that I had with her nearly 21 years ago when we uh, started dating. And uh, I remember when we were first dating, um, you know, I was 20 years old, she was 19, and uh, she would tell me things like this. Um, Don't buy me flowers. Um, flowers, I don't, I don't need flowers, don't buy me flowers, things like that. And first of all, when women say that, they don't really mean that, unless they're allergic to flowers. But when women say, don't buy me flowers, they don't really mean that. Um, everybody likes getting flowers, again, unless they're allergic to them. But uh, everybody likes getting flowers, and of course I've bought my wife flowers many, many times, and we've bought her flowers for Valentine's Day and Mother's Day, and um, Lots of other times in between, sometimes just because, uh, sometimes because I'm in trouble, or you know, whatever it might be. Um, but um, but we, buy, we buy flowers. But why would she have said, long ago, why would she have said, don't buy me flowers? Uh, I think she thought it was a waste of money. At least she was making the point that it can be a waste of money. But why would flowers be a waste of money? Why would flowers be a waste of money? Well, because what's going to happen with those flowers in a couple of days? In a few days, you know, you're going to get those flowers home. You're going to put them uh, into a vase and uh, um, you put some water in it. And they're going to uh, open up a little bit, hopefully. Uh, if you have like roses, you're going to open up a little bit. It'll be beautiful, it'll look nice. But then in a couple of days, they start to wither. They start to um, just, just wither away and they don't look so good. They don't smell so good, and uh, 
you're eventually going to take those flowers and you're going to throw them away. Throw them away. And so, because those flowers have what? They've already been, um, you know, cut from those bushes, uh, from those plants, and they're not going to keep producing new flowers. They're not going to stay alive all of the time because they've been cut off from, uh, from, from the plant. They've been cut off from the plant. And uh, that really brings us to our gospel reading today and our theme for this month of May, the I am verse for this month of May. And that is uh, these words of Jesus where he says, I am the true vine. And then he says, my father is the vine dresser. Uh, and he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Because you see, just like those flowers that wither away once they're cut off, um, also, when you have a vine and you have branches that bear fruit, in this case, we're thinking about grapevines, right? Grapevines, and you have this, this, this grapevine, but you have these branches that come off of it, and what, what ends up on the end of those branches? Fruit, beautiful, uh, tasty uh, grapes. Uh, that we eat or that we turn into um, other um, things. And, um, but we have these grapes, right? These grape, this, this fruit uh, that comes from uh, this vine. Um, but if we were to cut off that branch, are we going to get, and we just take this branch and we put it in our house, are we going to get any fruit on that branch? We're not going to get any fruit on that branch because uh, that branch has been cut off. It's no longer going to yield any fruit because it's detached from the vine, from its source of life. It's, a, it's detached from its source of life. And uh, we're not going to bear any fruit with that branch. It's, it's now dead. It's cut off. And uh, no fruit is going to come from it. But when it stays attached to that vine, when it stays attached to that source of life, uh, then that branch is going to bear fruit and we're going to prune it and, and take that fruit, yield that fruit, and that branch is going to continue to bear more fruit season after season and year after year. It's going to continue to, uh, to produce for us uh, because it's still attached to its life source. It's still cared for, taken care of, still, still attached to that life source. And Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And then he says, if we abide in him, remain attached to him, continue to uh, be, be part of, of his kingdom, uh, we will bear fruit. We will bear fruit. But when we're detached, um, we wither away. We, don't, we can't do anything good. We can't do anything good. By that I don't mean that we can't do any nice things in this world, but we can't do anything pleasing to God because we're no longer attached to the vine, to the one that ultimately pleases God, and that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so, what does it mean to abide in Christ, to remain attached to the vine? What does it mean? Uh, I'll tell you very simply what it means today, and we'll be kind of short today, but I'll tell you very simply what it means today. It means that we keep believing, that we keep trusting in Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we keep receiving His good news. To abide in Him certainly means that we love other people, that we keep His commandments, all of those things, but those are actually uh, the bearing of fruit. That's the fruit that's, that's born from, from abiding. But the abiding means that we remain in Him. We remain in Him when we uh, continue to uh, hold fast to Him as our Lord and our Savior. We remain in Him when we continue to uh, hear his word, hear his word and, um, and have it teach us by the Holy Spirit. When we come and we worship his name, when we turn to him in prayer and call upon him at every time of trouble, it, when we praise him, when we thank him, all of those things. We remain in him as we come to the Lord's table and receive the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins and, and uh, the strength that we need for this life. We continue to remain in Him when we continue to believe and hold fast to Christ as our Lord. Because outside of Him, we have nothing. Outside of Him, we have no real life. Outside of Him, we are 
dead in our trespasses and sins. We are branches that have been cut off and can be thrown into the fire. But in Him, in Him we have life and we have it abundantly. In Him we have the promises of forgiveness, life, and salvation. In Him we can continue to, uh, to live and to yield fruit. So we abide in Christ. We remain attached to the vine. He is our source of life. He is our source of life. And we find that source of life in Christ as we hear his word, as we receive his gifts in the sacraments. We find that source of life as we are fed and nourished by his word, always. And we continue to trust him. We continue to trust him. I'm reminded of the small catechism, Luther's small catechism on the third commandment. And it says, you know, the third commandment is remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And Luther says, what does this mean? He says that we should fear and love God so that, we, so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Hold it sacred. Why do we hold God's word sacred? Why are we not to despise his word? Because when we hear his word, when we hold it sacred, when we gladly hear it, when we are, remain uh, attentive and listening to the word of God, we remain abiding in Christ. We remain in Him. We continue to uh, uh, hear from Him, be fed and nourished by Him, we continue to have life in His name. And so, abide in Christ. I'm, I'm reminded of um, another example. We lived in Iowa for five years before moving uh, to California. And while we're living in Iowa, many of you may know this, um, if you've been in other states, or a family in other states. But in a lot of states, especially in the Midwest, uh, we don't have fences the way we have fences here. Like my house here, we have privacy fences, you know, that are uh, t taller than me, essentially, that uh, block off yards. But in Iowa, we didn't have fences like that. We might have a little retaining wall, or maybe a small fence, depending if you had pets or not. But for the most part, our yards uh, were open to each other. And our yard was open to our neighbor's yard, and our neighbor, uh, had their great granddaughter live with them, Raina. And uh, Raina and my kids, especially uh, Lily and Hannah, would play all the time. Uh, they loved playing together. Raina essentially lived at our house half the time. And, uh, but her great grandpa, Lonnie, uh, had just planted this brand new apple tree um, in his backyard. And it was an interesting kind of apple tree. It had like, um, they had like grafted in all these different kinds of apple, a different branch for different, uh, I don't know all the brands that were on there, but maybe some of, one of them was a Fuji and one of them was a Macintosh or whatever, but different branches would yield different apples. It's amazing how they can do stuff like that. But um, anyway, one day the girls were all out playing and having fun. I don't know what happened. They all deny ever touching it. Um, but one of the branches uh, broke off of this new apple tree. And, uh, uh, and, and Raina's great-grandpa was not happy, not happy uh, at all. Well, why was he not happy? Because he, he was not happy because that branch couldn't go back on. That branch was broken off, which meant that that kind of apple that that branch was supposed to, was supposed to uh, yield, make, produce, um, wasn't going to happen. There's going to be no fruit from that branch. When we're cut off from Jesus, when we uh, no longer have our life source in the vine, we're not going to produce fruits. The fruit of, of love and good works and, and caring for other people and um, all the nice things we can do in this world to show the love of Jesus. We're not going to produce those things because we are no longer attached to that love of Jesus. And so the message today is very simple. Well, first message, don't forget Mother's Day. Second message, and more importantly, don't forget to abide in Christ. Remain fed and nourished, finding your life in God's word. Believing and trusting each and every day that you have a Savior who loves you, who cares for you, who forgives you all your sins, who never leaves you, nor forsakes you, who is with you always, even to the end of the age. Trust and hold on to that, cling to him. And in him we have life, we have all that we need. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's join together now, praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next week. God bless.